Hi, I'm Andy the Palm Springs Linguist and today I'm traveling from Palm Springs, California to Newport Beach at Rogers Gardens to see their Cabinet of Curiosities Halloween display while answering the question, how did the Universal Classic Monsters get their names? But first, I'm here at the Cabazon Dinosaurs where the dinosaurs are dressed in their Halloween costumes. Mr. Rex is dressed as Fred Flintstone Dinny is dressed as Dino, Fred Flintstone's reliable pet. Horror movies reflect the fears of their era. The Universal Classic Monsters, with movies such as Dracula, Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Wolfman, and The Mummy, were popular during the 1930s through the 1950s. During this era, people had a fear of unstoppable entities, such as the Great Depression and the World War, which they felt powerless against. It is said that the Universal Classic Monsters represented these fears as they too were unstoppable and terrifying and we were powerless against them. In 1897, Bram Stoker's novel Dracula introduced the world to the most famous of vampires, who seems to be inspired by Romanian prince Vlad Tsepes, better known as Vlad the Impaler, who became known as Vlad III Dracula. In the Romanian language, Dracula is a diminutive, meaning son of Dracul. And in the Romanian word Dracul, the ol means the, and drac means devil. Therefore, Dracul means the devil. The Romanian word drac originally meant dragon, but has changed over time to mean devil. Notice the similarity between the Romanian word drac and the English word dragon. The D, R, A are identical, and the C and G are essentially the same sound, having the same point of articulation in the mouth. The only difference being whether you vibrate your throat as you pronounce them. Dragons used to be associated with the devil, so it seems fitting that a sinister character like Dracula has a name which essentially means son of the devil. Now let's take a look at one of the greatest movie monster creations, Frankenstein. In German, the word Frankenstein means Stone of the Franks. In the story, Dr. Frankenstein creates a monster. And so some argue that the monster should not be called Frankenstein, but rather Frankenstein's monster. Since in the story, Dr. Frankenstein doesn't actually name his creation. On the other hand, you could argue that his creation is part of the Frankenstein family and hence bears the name Frankenstein. Well, you can't stop a monster, and you can't stop language from changing. So whether you like it or not, Dr. Frankenstein's creation and its bride have come to be known simply as Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein. Not all universal monsters come from land. Creature from the Black Lagoon was a monster movie from 1954. The Creature from the Black Lagoon, also known as Gilman, is the last surviving descendant of a race of amphibious humanoids. He is called Gilman because he has gills that he uses to breathe underwater because he is amphibious and is built to survive both on land and underwater. The Black Lagoon is the name of the largely unexplored area of the Amazon rainforest where Gilman, the creature, calls home. If the creature from the Black Lagoon doesn't have you howling in fear, the Wolfman will. The Wolfman is a 1941 horror movie about a werewolf. A werewolf is a person who can shapeshift into a wolf. The word werewolf in Old English was a compound word that meant man-wolf. Reverse the order of man-wolf and it brings us right back to the Wolfman. It's not a wrap yet. We still need to discuss the mummy. The story of the etymology of mummy starts in the Persian language as mum, meaning wax. It was a substance used in embalming. The word mummy was preserved as it traveled through Arabic, Latin, and French on its way to English. Now it's a wrap, but I want to hear from you first. Which movie monster is your favorite? Tell me in the comments section below. Discover language you were never taught in school while exploring the California desert and beyond. If you enjoyed this episode, please click like and subscribe right now to not miss any future episodes of the Palm Springs Linguist.